great memories. Wow. I look much younger there. Just kidding. <laughs> that was a great picture. Thank you, Drake. Wow. Yeah. So uh, thank you to the JSO for uh, telling the story of Purim. Um, I think the story highlights uh, the gravity of the situation faced by the Jewish people and the courage of individuals like Queen Esther and Mordecai who takes decisive action uh, to thwart the genocidal plot. It also underscores the theme of good over evil and the events of Purim serve as a poignant reminder of the horrors of genocide and the importance of standing against injustice and persecution. So genocide, the word genocide, defined as a deliberate and systematic attempt to exterminate an ethnic, religious, or national group. And the events in the book of Esther and the story of Purim can be interpreted as one of the earliest recorded instances of attempted genocide in history. Over the years, the genocidal attempt against the Jews in the Purim story has been compared to the modern day Holocaust in Europe. The Holocaust profoundly impacted life in young Israel, a place where, where I was uh, born and raised. I recall our Israelis refrained from purchasing German cars or playing German music in symphony halls. On my street lived a Holocaust survivor, and I remember seeing the numbers tattooed on his arm. Regrettably, as kids, we sometimes made insensitive jokes, including mocking this man's tattooed numbers. Looking back, I'm deeply ashamed of our behavior, and today, as an older person, I keenly recognize the pain and trauma experienced by Holocaust survivors. I deeply regret not understanding the gravity, the gravity of the situation when I was younger. The book of Proverbs in the Old Testament says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. This verse reminds us that words have power, often so much power that they may lead to life or death. This proverb encourages people to use their words wisely and with kindness. It also recognizes our words can shape our beliefs and perception. So among the parallels between Haman's tactics in the Purim story and the spread of modern day um, anti-Semitism, hate, and genocide is his spread of false, inform false information about the Jewish people depicting, as this, depicting them as disloyal, different, and dangerous to the Persian Empire. By the way, the Persian Empire this day is a modern day Iran. That's what the Persian Empire is, which is interesting by itself. So, as I mentioned, uh, spreading, um, depicting the Jews as disloyal and different, it's almost like having a feud with a person who has uh, blue eyes and consequently spreading lies about all people with blue eyes. Unfortunately, these days, we are witnessing a great, great, great deal of misinformation. This, this generation heavily relies on social media, which often serves as a hub for propaganda and hate. Students today must take it upon themselves to study history from credible sources and not simply accept others' narrative, especially on social media. When people continually repeat misinformation, it can significantly impact their understanding of reality, as well as the understanding of those on the receiving end of their messages. 
Therefore, it's essential to be mindful of the information we consume and share, as well as the words we use. Choosing words carefully and verifying the accuracy of, inf of information can help us avoid falling into the trap of believing in falsehood, a mistake which can have serious real-world consequences. In the Purim story, Haman scapegoats the Jewish people for his personal grievances and convinces the king to issue a decree to exterminate all the Jews in the Persian Empire. Similarly, throughout history, Jews and other minorities have often been scapegoated for various societal problems such as economic crisis, plagues, or political unrest. The Purim story highlights the importance of cultural and religious identity. Minority groups often targeted based on their religious beliefs, their practices, and cultural traditions, seeking to undermine or eradicate their distinct identity. Through his actions and words, Haman dehumanizes the Jewish people in the Purim story, depicting them as enemies of the state and as a threat to the empire. Dehumanization is a common tactic used to justify hatred and violence towards a specific uh, group. I would like to conclude by saying that in the Old Testament's creation story, after each new creation, God declared it was good, indicating God's satisfaction with his creation. Only once did God declare that something was not good, and that was in connection with creating the first man, Adam, who was lonely. Therefore, God created a companion for Adam, Eve. In Judaism, the verse that fully captured the essence of the entire Bible is you shall love your neighbor as yourself, found in the book of Leviticus. Reflecting on God's error in the creation story, alongside this verse and the poem story, I strongly believe that our purpose and challenge in this world is to foster harmony and respect among one, one another. Loving your neighbor isn't just about loving those you already like or get along with. It's about getting along with those you disagree with and those who are different from you. I wish I had understood this when I was younger, your age. However, it's never too late to heed this command from the Bible to collaborate with God and to contribute to making the world a better place. Thank you.